3.0 Duramax diesel timing chains. This is a $10,000 repair and so many 2020 trucks are being hit with this right now. It is absolutely crazy. The good news is that there was actually an updated chain, which we're gonna get into. We're gonna go very deep into this. We're gonna see the measurements of in between the links and see how much play there was. I've got a microscope I'm gonna pull out. There was also um, an update to the Reluctor. This is a very solid piece. Whereas when the 2020 trucks first came out, they had this flimsy little one right here. And as you can see, it's very easily bent. We're gonna go into detail on that. And then we also have the camshaft cover issues, which I know many people know about the oil consumption issues and checking the number. But if you don't know, we're gonna get into all of that. But let's first start off with the initial issue that people got so sour about which is this oil pump belt. Now, when the 3.0 Duramax diesel came out, it was a, it was a 150,000 mile interval on this oil pump belt. And as time went on and there, they did more tests or what have you, they actually upped it to a 200,000 mile interval for the 2023 trucks and SUVs. So the LZ0 came out in 2023, the interval went up to 200,000 miles. However, the SUVs still had the LM2 engine and they got a 200,000 mile interval. And as we broke, when this first came out, this oil pump belt part number never changed. So the guys that are due for 150,000 miles, I know there's a lot of people that are saying, well, since the belt didn't change, nothing changed. I'm gonna go ahead and run 200,000 miles. You do what you wanna do. It's gonna pop up at 150,000 miles on your dash to go ahead and do it. But anyway, enough about the oil pump belt. We're here for the $10,000 repair, and this is just horrendous. So. What we have here is the first design timing chain. And as we take a closer look at it, you can see it just looks like any old timing chain. And in a moment, we're gonna get into some measurements on this and I'm gonna show how much wear there is. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this brand new timing chain. And we're gonna show what changed. And you can see those holes right there in between the links, right? The initial 2020 trucks did not have those holes in there. So I believe, what engineering found out was that there was a lack of lubrication on this timing chain. So they had to go to a slightly different design, whereas it has the holes in there to attract the oil to get inside there. And that's gonna help cool the timing chain down if it's getting hot. I mean, it's at the back of the engine, in between the engine and the transmission, there's a lot of heat that's being built up back there and retained. So extra oil is definitely a huge plus. Now you can see the pins for the links are actually slightly different as well in comparison to the old style. Now I'm not enough of a timing chain professional, so I couldn't tell you exactly what's going on here. But what I can tell you is extra oil was required to extend the life of the timing chain. And I will tell you that these chains came out in 2020, roughly early 2021 was when the updated chains came out. So with me being a GM tech at a dealership, I'm seeing the 2020 trucks right now, and I actually have not done any chains on anything older than a 2020 truck. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about your 3.0 Duramax diesel, and I'm not saying that all 2020 trucks are going to have a timing chain issue. I'm just saying those ones came with what I believe is a flawed design, and this updated design is much better because it helps with the oil. Now, speaking of oil, there's oil consumption issues with the 3.0 Duramax and it came down to the camshaft cover for many of them. And what you do is I have a video on this showing exactly what to do, but you look for this number, you compare it to the bulletin. And what happens is there was a, a flawed design inside the camshaft cover where it would allow oil to get passed through the PCV. And in that case, it would start to burn the engine oil through the engine. So you don't want that, but if you run it low on oil, the chain is gonna take the hit because there's less oil. The oil's gonna break down quicker. It's gonna get hotter. It's not gonna be able to fight off the heat and that's going to cause problems here. Now let's get into the Reluctor. Look at this Reluctor. See how thin this little metal is? I don't know the exact year again that they made the change. It was not 21, I believe it was 22 but they went to this design. Look how much more robust this is in comparison to this flimsy one. Now this one is bent likely from removal, but I'm not sure if the high heat would actually allow these to move just a little bit and that would also throw off timing a little bit. But what clarifies the real issue is measurements of the timing chain. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna measure in between seven links on the new one, compare it to the old ones and we'll see what kind of measurements we have. 
We're gonna go ahead and get some measurements here. I chose roughly 100 millimeters was the goal. So let's pull on this as much as we can. I got 98.95 between those. So that is a new chain right there. All right, now let's grab this chain right here and we're going to measure in roughly the same amount of links. 99.73 is what we're getting on this one. Pull it tight and we got 99.59. So based on these measurements, we have a brand new chain measuring across seven links equals 98.95 millimeters. And one of the used chains, which makes 0.78 millimeters across the seven links. Now there's 52 total links on here. So 52 divided by seven equals 7.43 total. So we're going to go ahead and do 0.78 millimeters times 7.43. That's gonna give us a measurement of the whole chain so there's 5.8 millimeters of slack that's actually in the used chain versus the new chain. That's quite a bit. Now let's see what these links look like under a microscope to see where this movement is coming from. All right, so I have one of the failed chains under this microscope here. I'm gonna do my best to kind of show how much movement we have in between the links. You can see the movement on this one quite a bit there and I'll compare it to the other one the other worn chain so it looks like less movement on this one but still movement there now let's go ahead and compare it to a brand new chain since we have it here with us there's our movement on the new one. Just a little bit. Now this new one doesn't have any oil in it either. And that will help it not move as much. But as you can compare to the used ones versus the new one, there's a significant amount of movement difference on there. And that's what happens when we pulled it tight. We can actually see the measurement on there. And that's how much movement we have. Now, since we're under here, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the changes in the chains itself. So we use one. Now here's our new updated design. Let's see the different bushing style inside there with the oil groove. So we all know that this is a very scary repair. $10,000 is a lot of money if you have to have this. Hopefully you have an extended warranty if you are hit with that because that's a huge bill. Now, what can you do to extend the life of your engine and timing chain? Good quality engine oil. Now we do know 0W20, that's gonna put up a fight on the internet if we talk about the uh, thickness, viscosity of the engine oil. So we're not gonna get into that because a lot of people do are actually switching to 5W30. And like I said, we're not gonna get into that, so I'm gonna leave that alone. What I do wanna talk about is the Dexos D, and this is a semi-synthetic engine oil. I know there's a big battle online and people go back and forth, but I actually reached out to AC Delco and I got confirmation that's a semi-synthetic oil, and this is a synthetic oil. So use high quality engine oil for one, and your maintenance intervals, you can follow the dash, it's gonna put you at like a 7,500 mile interval, and I'm not comfortable with that. I like 5,000 miles at the very most. And if you know the channel, you know that I've tested a lot of oils and we're seeing differences in there. A lot of people love AMS oil. A lot of people love this. I think this is great because the cost of this is like $22, I believe, through Walmart. And it's super easy to get, whereas the Dexos D was a little bit of an issue in the very beginning years of the 3.0 Duramax. But I think the value over this, with it being a full synthetic, See, advanced full synthetic. This is a high quality oil. A lot of people are running this, good value. Use a good oil filter. Wix is like the one of the lowest cost oil filters. It's a high quality oil filter for what it is. So a lot of people are using that. I like the PPE larger filter, but use whatever you want. Just change your oil and uh, stay on top of maintenance and you'll help to extend the life of your timing chain. Hopefully this video was helpful and understanding. Maybe uh, give some worry to some people with the 2020s. Maybe it lessen the worry with people with 2021 plus trucks. Either way, I'm just here to provide information 